Hi everyone, it's Chris Davison here. I hope you're all doing okay and have had a very good week. Back today with my third Arsenal Q&A show with and on a Chronicles of Aguna. First off, I just want to say thank you for all of the positive feedback that I've received from my first two shows. That's hugely appreciated. And thank you for getting involved. Thank you for submitting your questions because without them, this show wouldn't be possible and it probably wouldn't exist. So thank you. I really do appreciate that. Um, again, this week, lots of interesting and varied questions submitted in to me. Um, some surrounding Meza Ozil and his situation at the club at the moment. Obviously, lack of game time and squad involvement wasn't even on the bench last night for our um, victory in the Europa League. Um, question uh, focusing on Nicola Pepe and his start to his Arsenal career. Obviously, a few questions being asked of, of him already. So, lots to get through um, and I'm really looking forward to getting this one um, underway. So, without further ado, let's uh, make a start. The first question I'm going to focus on comes from Ethan, who is asked about that Meza Ozil situation. He asks, what do you make of the Ozil situation? Do you think he will be gone in January? And if so, how much money should Arsenal look to receive for him? Well, First of all, uh, Ethan, great question. And I'm just going to focus on the, the first part to begin with. Simply for me, from my point of view, it's a very disappointing, quite sad situation. You know, when we look back at when Mesut Ozil first joined the club, 42 million record signing, uh, made the fans erupt with excitement and happiness. And he, he got off to a very good start. You know, he, he was playing well. He was making a difference. He's won trophies here. And over the years... Um, he's really settled in now, um, and he, he he loves he loves playing for this 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 club. So it is disappointing to see um, him struggling at the moment and struggling to get into the team, um, and, and Unai Emery not including him. I think Unai Emery was asked about this last night and why he wasn't involved once again. I can't remember Unai's reply word by word, but I think it was something along the lines of that he just um, wanted to give. Uh, the chances to players that deserve to 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 play and and who have been working hard, so you know from from what I'm getting from what I'm uh, looking at with Emery's replies and his responses, which are quite um, short and sweet, um, it seems to me maybe Emery's um, just not not keen on Ozil at the moment. He doesn't think he can make a difference within his team. Um, maybe Ozil hasn't been training. Um, uh, with a hundred percent effort, maybe his head's not in the right place at the moment. Maybe he's showing the right, at wrong attitude. Sorry, who, who knows? You know, I'm sure it'll all come out in the end. Um, but how it will end, I'm really not sure. The thing is, for me, it's got to the point now where I'm thinking, what is the point of him being here if he's not playing? As much as he is a fantastic player on his day, he can make a difference now and again, and I'm sure the squad look up to him because he's played at the highest level and he's a fantastic footballer with fantastic ability but he's also on 350 grand a week and he's not playing so look it's a very dis difficult uh, situation will he be gone in January I don't know he could be gone then he could be gone in the summer I suppose that it does depend on if any suitable offers come in I don't think we'll get anywhere near what we what we bought him for probably maybe around 30 million um you know what he's around 30 years old now as well so it's not like he's getting any younger um so yeah we'll have to wait and see but for me it is a disappointing situation um i, I did expect at least play him in the europa league last night um so yeah again not involved in the in the united game on on monday as well so weird situation disappointing to see um, we'll have to uh, wait and, and see what, what comes out of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> time will tell with that one. Um, the next question comes in uh, from uh, Tay Tay, uh, who asks, I understand Pepe will take time, but why is his work rate and movement off the ball so poor? Is he unfit because Mourinho said his work rate was excellent at Lille? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um, I remember Mourinho saying that the other week. And he was, he was praising him quite a bit, actually, um, and deservedly so because Nicola Pepe for all last season was he was fantastic. He was scoring goals, he was assisting, he was just making the ultimate difference in games. Um, I think he got the Player of the Season as well. But uh, look, I think it, it will take time. It, you know, work rate and movement off the ball is 
the whole part of a, a player performance in football now. It's all included, you know, your work off the ball, um, the movement, you, you know, your passing, you, you scoring goals and assisting and your attitude on the pitch. It's all part of a playing performance now. So he is struggling to score goals at the moment. He's struggling to get assists. Um, there has been questions asked about his attitude off the ball and his sort of um, his work rate. But that, like I said, that will all come with time and it will hopefully all click together and he will be the player that he was last season. I, I watched him last night when he, he came off the bench um, in the Europa League game last night and, you know, he's got such quick feet. He's skillful. He only played for a short amount of time um, towards the end of the game. But not just from last night, from previous games, I, I've seen what he's capable of and he can actually beat players at least. You know, he's skillful. He's quick. Um, I know it's some of his decision making has been questionable so far and, um, you know, that's fair enough. But he's even openly admitted that he has struggled a little bit to adapt, but he's he's confident that he, he will in the end. Um, you know, obviously it's a different style in the Premier League, uh, more physical, m more quick. Um, obviously a completely different language here as well for him. So all of those factors, you know, do do to go together and, it will be a struggle. I'm sure if most of us went to a different country to live over there for for maybe a few years, um, you know, we'll feel quite uncomfortable. It'll be quite daunting um, and it would be a struggle. But, you know, we'd depend on friends and family and new people that we meet up with to make us feel comfortable, um, to make us feel uh, welcome. And I'm sure in time, that will that will help him and it will help him settle in. You know, we we know the group the group of boys, should I say, um, that we have at the club, um, and they've always been very welcoming to all the new players that have come in. Um, a lot of the new players have said in, in recent times that um, certain individuals have helped them, um, and I think you know with that comes confidence. And I've got absolutely no doubt about it that that Pepe will um, will unleash suddenly at some point this season and be a very good player for us. Um, so I'm not too concerned. Um, his work rate and movement that you've you've specifically mentioned in that question, that will also improve once he adapts to the physicality and the pace of the Premier League. I'm sure that will come. So I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Um, if we're still talking about this come the end of the season, Pepe really hasn't improved, then I'll be a bit more concerned. But we're what, only several games in, into the new season. Um, and I'm not I'm not too concerned. We've, so, we've seen glimpses of what he's capable of. And um, I'm excited to see um, how uh, how he does in the, the coming months at the football club. So our next question comes from Callie, um, or Kale, Kale? Oh, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, apologies. I have probably pronounced it wrong, Nermi, and, and names. But you have asked, if Emery doesn't get the contract extension after this season, then who would you want us to target and who do you think we will go for? I personally feel like the club has a plan for Freddie. Otherwise, I hope Eric Ten Hag from Ajax would be a candidate. Well, interesting couple of names you've mentioned now. I'll focus more on them in a second. But for me, it's still, like I said in a, uh, one of the previous shows, it's still fairly early days to be talking about Unai Emery replacements. I know the recent performances have, have led to these questions being asked of the head coach, but he still needs time. I still think it's early on in the season. Um, and this would be more of a sensible talking point towards the end of the season or actually at the end of the season because we'll have a better understanding of you know where we are in the, ta in, in the league table, how well we've done performance-wise, um, where we are in the Europa League and other cup competitions as well. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it'd be better to talk about that then. And we, we, we as fans, we would know um, if we need to go for anyone else and who we should be looking at. Um, but I think you know, Freddie first of all, a fan favourite, obviously at the club, done really well with the under twenty threes last season. Um, he gets on really well with the young players within the squad as well. Um, and he's he's had an, a positive impact. So, of course, that one um, could be written in the stars. He's now with obviously the first or well, amongst the first team coaching staff. So he'll be getting more experience. He'll be learning um, uh, more as well this season. So potentially, you never know. Um, Freddie is Arsenal manager, Freddie Lamberg. We'll see about that. Um, Eric Ten Hag, I must admit, I haven't seen too much of Ajax this season, but I saw a few clips of their... Um, performance in the Champions League the other night and they were playing some really, really nice football. I think they won comfortably in the end at Valencia. 
Um, uh, we know a lot about that, don't we? But um, yeah, playing some really good football. Looks like he's got the team set up well there. Obviously, a lot of talented youngsters and individuals there as well. For me, um, personal um, favourites, managerial-wise, um, El Agri, the former Juventus boss, done really well there, won trophies, was successful, he's experienced as well and obviously out of the job, but there is a few rumours that Man United could be eyeing him up. And then another another manager, Antonio Conte, um, obviously former Chelsea uh, head coach and, and now at Inter Milan, who have made a very good start to their season. He set them up very well. He's getting um, uh, wins on the board and uh, they were playing very well the other night at, at Barcelona. So um, obviously I know him a bit a bit better than other people as well because he's been in the Premier League already with Chelsea. You know, he's a passionate coach, um, obviously experienced, um, has won trophies, um, sets his teams up well. Just obviously his second or was it his second, second season at Chelsea didn't quite go to plan. Um, but still, he's a very good coach and I think he could probably get the best out of this Arsenal team and hopefully bolster the defence as well. Um, so they're certainly people I would consider and um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see uh, how that one pans out because like I said, it would be something to think about, I think, maybe at the end of the season. Um, uh, you never know, Emery could still turn things around. So we've just got time for one more question now, guys, and it comes from Preshi underscore Chandon who asks, will Bellerin feature this weekend? Well, I think the only person that will know the answer to that question is Bellerin and, well, probably Unai Emery himself. Um, but look, from my point of view and taking into consideration that Hector played the full 90 minutes last night, I'd say it's unlikely he'll feature this weekend. I think we still need to tread carefully with the, the, the return of players. Um, they've all done really well with the under-23s and the first team um, when they've they've played um, since, since returning. Um, uh, possibly Rob Holding could feature because he was back just before Hector and Kieran was so he could possibly feature maybe even if he's on the bench but I think maybe it's still too soon for Kieran and, and Hector um, but look from my point of view I think it's just really positive to see them back in action um, and I'm sure you guys agree um, uh, Hector and Holding were two players that we missed massively towards the end of the last season two very important players for us um, probably two of the best players last season until they obviously received their injuries and um, you could see the difference without them. And then with Kieran, who has been absolutely fantastic in his first couple of games for us, I'm just really excited to see him in the, the, the first team playing regularly. We've got, we have got a left back that can actually cross a ball, guys. You know, that's how, it, <laughs> that's how big this is. Um, and, his, you know, he works hard as well uh, up and down that wing on that left side. He was fantastic last night. Um, got the assist as well for Martinelli's goal, who also was the shining star last night. Um, so yeah, I think just plenty of positives to take away from their you know games since they've returned. They've been really good, really sharp, and with them completing the ninety minutes now, I think it's a massive step in the the right direction and probably closer, even closer now to getting back into the first team and um, really fighting for their place in the start eleven. So probably too soon this weekend for Bellerin and possibly Kieran as well, but maybe um, uh, Rob will be back quite soon um, and then I'm sure before we know it they'll be back in that team making a you know a positive impact having a, having a positive impact on this on this Arsenal side and hopefully boost us defensively especially <laughs> so um, yeah I'm, I'm out of time there guys so many questions to get through in this in this episode but some really good ones some really interesting ones to answer apologies if I haven't managed to answer your question but please be sure to submit your questions in for next week's show and I'll do my very best to answer them all. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a, uh, leave a thumbs up. Really appreciate you tuning in um, anyway. And yeah, um, a really, really good show um, to, to do. Um, I'll be back next week. Hopefully we'll be talking about um, uh, some more positive results. Um, and hopefully a Pepe Masterclass maybe hopefully this weekend. That will do them the world of good. Hopefully we can, um, we can get the three points against Bournemouth and... Uh, uh, be in a good possession uh, leading into next week so thank you very much for tuning in guys hope you've enjoyed the show and i'll catch you with you next week take care